Welcome everybody to uh, Startup Talk at Cal State Fullerton. We're broadcasting from, uh, at the university, uh, Titan Radio. Titan Radio is 24 seven and has been in business since uh, the early 2000s. Our show is all about startups and uh, uh, advisors and people who are living the dream um, we, um, uh, have a variety of folks who, uh, who come and join us and we, uh, get to know them and, and, uh, experience, uh, startup life, uh, through them. Uh, I'm John Bradley Jackson. I'm your host. I get called JJ a lot. I teach at Cal State Fullerton. I'm a professor of entrepreneurship. I, uh, direct the, uh, Center for Entrepreneurship and, um, uh, run a couple of our startup incubators. I'm also an angel investor. And uh, uh, my background is uh, Silicon Valley and Wall Street. And this is kind of my third career. So you can uh, follow us on our website uh, at fullerton.edu. Uh, my personal website is johnbradleyjackson.com. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. It, interesting to note that uh, this is internet radio. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that the uh, show was broadcast in about 130 countries, including Nigeria. And so I find myself slowing down <laughs> a bit, <laughs> thinking, well, do the people in Nigeria know where Fullerton is? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I find myself defining things. Uh, so um, with that, I'd like uh, our guest to self-introduce herself and say hello. Hi, this is Alexis Amogane Akpodiete. Now you perform under your middle name though. I do, I perform just under my middle name. Um, it's pronounced Amogane, but for those that are Americans, they can say Amogane. Americans, okay. <laughs> And does it have a special meaning? Uh, yes, it does. It actually, it means God's child. Wow. Aren't you special? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, welcome to our show. Thank you. And you're a singer, you're a songwriter, you're a, a poet. And that's all wrapped up in effectively starting your career and your business. Yes. Uh, as an entrepreneur. I, to yeah. me, it's all tied up in a bow there. It is. So um, now your website says you're uh, a mix of acoustic, neo-soul, R&B, and pop. Yeah. What is acoustic neo-soul? So like neo-soul itself is like a mix of, of jazz and R&B and hip hop and rap music. Um and then acoustic, like acoustic guitar. I like a lot of like acoustic sounds and I like that, that live feel. So I want people when they're listening to, to my records that they feel like I'm right there in the room with them. All right, cool. And you also, your um, website references your church upbringing. Yes. And so tell me about church. Um, I grew up in the church. Um, I was saved when I was um, 13 years old, um, two days actually before my 14th birthday. And um, I think um, being in the church, you you have a different understanding of music and worship itself is so moving. And um, because of music is actually why I was saved. So would you mind disclosing what denomination? Yeah, I'm actually a non-denominational Christian. Um, so that means I I believe in the Bible as it's written. Um, I follow Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't follow any extra doctrine. So as I don't make any additions or subtractions to the Bible. Okay, cool. And then you also reference your uh, Nigerian uh, roots. Yes. So I'm actually a first generation Nigerian American. Um, my parents, both of my parents, my mom and dad, um, were born and raised in Nigeria. And then, uh, my mom spent some time in Jamaica before she did come here to the U.S. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, let's, uh, 
I'd like to start with uh, songwriting. And so tell me how you do that. Um, so for me, um, I don't think there's like a particular way I songwrite or most of the times these days I have to like stop myself from writing. So I could be anywhere at any point in time and get a burst of inspiration. And sometimes I get random lyrics. So I'm always writing things down in my phone, recording things on my voice notes. And there are always things I can come back to later. But maybe if like um, one of maybe a musician will send me something like, hey, can you write to this? Or one of my producers will send me something like, hey, write to this. I think this will be a dope record for you. Um, then I sit down to to write that. Mm -hmm. So um, like one of the uh, questions that I was going to ask, and I'll ask it, yeah. is do you start with a, a thought, a subject, a title, and then write it, and then you do the music, or, mm -hmm. or, or, or? Um, it's always random. So sometimes, sometimes it's like a thought, right? A lot of the, the songs I've written, um, are based off of a feeling, right? So maybe, um, I went through a particular experience and some people are able to, to write within that time that they're feeling that they're going through those things. But for me, when I'm going through those things, I actually don't write about it. I wait till after the fact, to write about it and at that time I, i'm able to process my feelings and process why i feel the way i'm feeling and um, i'm able to to write better you know lyrically so that people other people can understand me so are the lyrics first or is it the uh, the melody um definitely the melody definitely okay. the melody and then the lyrics sometimes um it's the music first and then the thought and then the lyrics mm -hmm. And uh, do you uh, say, all right, I'm going to have a certain structure, you know, uh, traditionalist verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, something like that? Um, it depends. Sometimes um, I know that there's some some writers that write in a particular pattern, but depending on maybe if I write some lyrics and I feel like no, this is this is something that really, really stands out and that I feel is repetitive enough to get stuck in people's head, then I'll make that the course. Okay. If that makes I, sense. I get it. I get it. Yeah. And uh, are you recording with your iPhone? Mm -hmm. uh, are you writing down things? Or what's the uh, yes. how, how do you preserve it? So um, first I'll um, maybe if I'm like out somewhere, I'll just quickly like write it in my my note, my notes mm -hmm. and then I'll record it a voice note. Maybe mm -hmm. if the melody is like a more of like an intricate melody that's not really like known, um, I'll have to um, record it on my voice, my voice note so that I remember it later. Because chances are you probably won't remember it later. <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, I have a friend who's a psychotherapist. And uh huh. By the way, it's none of your business why I have a friend who's a psychotherapist. <laughs> but uh, what he uh, has told me is that don't worry, it's the thought is still there and it'll come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he also applies that in listening. Is that if you really listen to someone, you don't really need to take notes because mm -hmm. they're going to keep repeating themselves anyway, right? To reemphasize mm -hmm. the point, but. I think Sometimes, sometimes that's true, but I think like, I can't speak for all creatives, but for me, like there's like a million thoughts going on in my brain at one time. Right. right so if right. I don't write it down or if I don't record it right there and then there is a high chance I will forget. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, uh, uh, a famous person who you probably don't know. Uh, he was the uh, first host of the Tonight Show mm -hmm. and his name was Steve Allen. And he was a uh, self-taught musician. He wrote over a thousand songs and he went around with a little recorder at all times to capture his thoughts. And then he would go back to them later and, and listen to those thoughts. Yeah. He kept it on his nightstand at night because he'd wake up at night after a dream or whatever. And he, you know, bark into his uh, recorder. <laughs> so uh, there's uh, something. Now, do you play an instrument, by the way? I don't. Um, I was learning guitar for some time. I actually want to get back to it. Um, 
one of my friends, John Abafi, was teaching me how to play guitar. I've gotten so busy, so I haven't been able to go back to it. But no, I do not write, play any instruments. Okay, cool. You know, I'd like to play uh, your debut single. Okay. And let's see if I can pull this off. Uh, I'm told I've got to... I can take, I can be, I can do what I want to. It's my life, I can breathe, I can sing, I can see. The show wasn't born for you. I'm alive, I can think, I can speak, I am free. They'll never take that from me. They'll never take that from me. They'll never take that from me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Every day's my birthday When I'm better than I was yesterday May not be what you think when you see me I don't fit just the way that you want me I don't quit when they tell me I can't be, I can't be, I can't be I can't be, I can't be, I can't be I can't be, I can't be, I can't be, I can't be. Time I trust in my guts, always right, always real And do just what I feel Time I speak what I want, what I dream, what I see Cause the show was made for me I work hard, I got four, I got scars, I got marks They'll never take that from me They'll never take that from me They'll never take that from me Every day's my birthday When I'm better than I was yesterday May not be what you think when you see me I don't fit just the way that you want me I don't quit when they tell me I can't be, I can't be, I can't be I can't be, I can't be, I can't be I can't be, I can't be, I can't be, I can't be. I can't be, I can't be. I just want to be better I just want to be greater I just want to be better I just want to be greater Than I was yesterday, day, day Than I was yesterday, day, day Every day, every day, every day, day, day Oh uh -huh. You are gonna be better You are already better Cause every day's my birthday When I'm better than I was yesterday May not be what you think when you see me I don't fit just the way that you want me I don't quit when they tell me I can't be, I can't be, I can't be I can't be, I can't be, I can't be I can't be, I can't be, I can't be Very cool. Uh, that was Every Day is My Birthday. What was the inspiration for that? Um, you know, I wrote that 
right after well i started it um my summer when i was in japan but and i literally only wrote like two lines at that time and i came back to it after i came back home from easter telling my parents that i didn't want to go to law school anymore and that i wanted to sing and um i was actually really surprised that they were like so supportive and um there was like so many things i was feeling at that time you know and a lot of insecurities went away that year when was this by the way i wrote this last year yeah last year it was last year during easter and um yeah i told my i told my parents um that i didn't want to go to law school anymore and they were like surprisingly very supportive and there were so many things i was feeling like wow like it's really really like my life like i can do whatever i want to do you know and um one of the things I realized on my journey is that you really have to believe in yourself first before anyone will believe in you. You know, some people like always like to say like, oh, make sure that you're around people that believe in you just as much as um, or more than you believe in yourself. But I don't believe in that. I believe that you have to believe in yourself first and you have to believe in yourself more than anyone else in the room. And then after that, they will follow. Got it. Yeah. Now, were you in law school or, or planning to go to law school? I was planning to go to law school, and that was actually the time. So, you know, you have to take the LSAT one year before you graduate, right? And so it was the time that I needed to take that, and my dad started buying me things, like, to take the LSAT, you know, to study. And I was just freaking out. Like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I don't really want to do this. Um, and I just finally came around to telling him. Cool. Very bold decision. So <laughs> let's go back to your singing career. Yeah. Um, tell me about. Um, no. So why did you? Why? Why did you do this? Is there a way that maybe yeah. a complicated question actually? Yeah, that's a very very packed question. <laughs> okay, so, um, I've been singing since I was seven years old. Um, sometimes I almost feel like it's like in my dna like it's one of those things that you can't like shake off of you you know it's like something you always do wherever you are at all times of the day and um i feel like i kind of just pick law as a practical thing because it's something that i felt like my parents would be proud of but your parents are proud of you when you excel in doing whatever you're doing right and that could be anything um i think you just know like when when i was younger some kids got like their phone taken away i was one of those kids that if i did something bad my mom would tell me that i couldn't go to choir practice because she knew that i loved it so much <laughs> <laughs> you know um yeah so it's just like something that's a part of me you know and something that i know that i enjoy doing i feel like i have a lot to say and i I know that there are people that could learn from my mistakes. I I feel that there are people out there that can also feed off of the confidence, you know, that I have. And I hope that that translates through the music, you know, when they hear it. And um, I don't want to ever just talk about like superficial things or like superficial happiness or like momentary things. Like I want to talk about like real emotions and real life and real issues and how somebody like me deals with those things. And I have a friend, she said, it sounds like it sounds sometimes like I'm writing a journal entry to myself and everybody's listening, you know, listening in on my journal entries, you know, or reading my journal entries. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I've heard that uh, people who uh, opt into a career as a counselor, as a psychologist, uh, their first motivation is to better understand themselves. Hmm. Kind of makes some sense when you think about it. So uh, who are your fans, by the way? Who's your audience? Who are you singing to? Um, number one, people that are music lovers, like people that like like raw and real music. Um people that are looking for authenticity and honesty um someone that's that wants to hear the truth you know those are the people that are listening to to what i have to say um 
I think I realized that the people, the age group is very dynamic because if I look at my insights and my analytics, it's definitely been people from the ages of 18 to the ages of 40. Um, because Neo Souls is one of those genres that is so wide, you know, it's, it, it appeals to the young people as well as um, the old heads mm -hmm. as well. The folks in midlife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, so you've been singing since you were very young. Yes. Uh, and that's something you discovered about yourself, mm -hmm. I, I guess. Now, did you get music lessons? Are you classically trained? Is this self-taught? Um, well, when for a long, 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 long time, I was not trained. I always like sang in church and maybe like we would have a choir director and they would um, direct us on what to do and um, how to sing. But um, a couple years ago, I started recording in the studio. And um, when you sing live, you assume that you know how to sing in the studio. And then you get there in the studio and you realize, no, no, I don't know how to sing in the studio. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to take a step back from recording. And this was actually, this was my, my sophomore year. Yeah. When I started taking vocal lessons and it was like a big sacrifice, you know, to take that because I knew that I needed to invest in myself. And uh, I remember at that time I was making like $10 an hour. And um, I was telemarketing. Which is what I make, by the way. So it's <laughs> <laughs> I was making $10 an hour and I was working like 25 hours a week and I was paying my rent and paying all my bills. And at that time, I had to learn to live small because I had to pay for um, vocal lessons, which is something that I knew that I really, really wanted. And at that time, what's weird is I hadn't even made the decision to to pursue music. You know, I just, it was just something that I knew that I wanted for myself, for my own personal growth. So yeah, recording in the studio is why I decided to get a vocal coach. Got it. So uh, of the two uh, uh, venues, live or uh, in the studio, mm -hmm. which do you prefer? I definitely prefer, for, prefer live. Um, there's just something so <clears throat> beautiful about live music. You know, um, and I don't just like live music. Like I love like performing a song like without a track, like from scratch, you know, and um, also giving different interpretations of a song that I wrote or a different interpretation of like a cover song. It's just such a unifying experience because there could be people in the audience that don't even speak the same language as you. They're not from the same place as you. Um, so different ethnicities, different races, different religious backgrounds, um, different worldview perspectives. And at that time, it's almost like everyone is just speaking the same language at that point. And that is a very beautiful yeah. thing. So when you're singing live, uh, is it fun? Is it scary? Mm, definitely not scary. It's more like a fun thing. You know, I, I really, really enjoy myself and I'm really, really lucky that I've able to meet, um, I've been able to meet a group of musicians that make performing very fun because I know some other people that the people that they work with are not, are not so great, but I've been very blessed in that aspect to, to be around not just only great musicians, but great people as well. Are there people that, uh, performers mm -hmm. uh, that you admire, you find inspiration from, that you want to be like, or um, I wouldn't say I want to be like anyone. I think that there are people that I grew up listening to that really, really introduced me to to beautiful lyricism, like Lauren Hill, um, Indiari. Um, I really love Kirk Franklin. Um, Tasha Cobbs. Um, but yeah, those are like all amazing lyricists, you know, that I grew up listening to and that I currently listen to. Jessie J as well. She's a phenomenal singer. And um, these are all singer songwriters. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. As a uh, live performer, uh, is there anything uh, 
or many things that you've learned about yourself through performing life? Um, what have I learned about myself? Um, I think definitely, definitely is that I like telling stories. You know, I really, really like talking to people about the background of a song. And I know everyone doesn't do that at their shows. You know, they just leave the song up for interpretation. And um, I like I like people to understand the background of why I wrote a song. Got it. You know, it's a journey. Got it. So let's flip it for a second. So now you're the poet. OK. Yeah. Um, uh, when did you start writing in that format that way? As a poet? You know, what's weird is that um, I had like written poetry like here and there when I was younger. But my freshman year of college at Biola, I was going to Biola my freshman year. Um, I have a I have a friend. Her name is um, Betsy Rose, Betsy Rose. And she wanted to join the Biola spoken word team. And she asked me if I would come with her to the meeting and I was like sure I guess so I went with her you know and they were doing all their their poems and I sat down I was like I guess I'll write some poems you know and um, when I started out I wasn't so good I was just you know writing a whole bunch of things whatever they were telling us to write I wrote um, they told me that um, it would be a, a lot of commitment to join I really I until today I can't really even explain why I even joined <laughs> it's literally just because my friend asked me if I would join and um, that year um, after writing, you know, a certain amount of times, um, I slammed that year. I did a poetry slam and I got first place. Wow. Which wow. was very, very shocking, yeah. you know? Yeah. So what types of poetry have you written? It was, so spoken word, spoken word. Um, and I wrote about anything and everything, you know, you would pick a topic a week and you'd write about that, you know, and if you have something else you want to write, you you write about that but every week you were writing something consistently and it could be about the most random things and then some of those words the, some of those poems mm -hmm. could become songs or yeah. is that different yeah they could become songs but songwriting i think is a very separate art because if that were the case then every poet would be a songwriter but i do feel like songwriting is a is a skill that you do have to develop because you you write in a particular pattern um spoken word is more of like a free form um so i really had to learn to compact what i want to say mm -hmm. and as much as i want to say in three minutes and 30 seconds or in five minutes which is very very different from spoken word mm -hmm. and when you're writing uh poetry is there uh, a predominant emotion that triggers you to write? Uh, is there a situ uh, something that pushes you to write mm -hmm. in that way? Um, sometimes it is a particular emotion. Sometimes, um, especially at that time, my freshman year, they would give you a topic to write about and it would require you to have to revisit certain situations in your life. Maybe sometimes that you don't want to revisit, um, and deal with those emotions, you know, and write about them and really like unpack those emotions. And you can see like how similar that is to my current songwriting process, having to unpack my emotions and, um, revisit certain situations so that I can process correctly. Well, let's take uh, a little time to get to know you personally. So yeah. could you tell me a bit about your uh, childhood, mm -hmm. what life was like? Um, well, I grew up with a single mom. So my parents were divorced when I was like three years old. And I grew up with a single mom. She was very, very strict, you know, very, very strict Nigerian mom. A lot of people know that Nigerian parents are super, super strict. I did not know that. <laughs> Um, but that's like a shared shared knowledge amongst the Nigerian community. Um, but that strictness and that discipline definitely did transfer over, you know, into into the workplace, into my career, you know, and into everything I do. Um, just having that drive, I think watching her, you know, be so tenacious, you know, and be independent and being so driven 
really, really influenced um, everything that I do now. And just that like spirit of excellence is it's it's one thing for your parents to say something. But when you see them do it, you know, it makes a big difference. You're always going to follow what they do rather than what they say. Got it. And uh, so in, in high school, uh, where would I find you? at high school were you in the drama club in the band uh you know uh smoking cigarettes out on the field <laughs> <laughs> um definitely not um i was like a choir nerd like all throughout high school um any opportunity for me to sing i would sing um those that graduated with me from Kenya high school they all know that i sang at like every high school rally that i could um any opportunity that they gave me to sing i sang yeah. Did you have uh, hobbies along with choir or? No, singing has literally been like my wow. favorite hobby. Like it's always just been something that I've always done. All right. Let's uh, uh, go on now to uh, another one of your songs is called Underestimated. And let's see I don't I... think that is the right one. Uh, yeah. Oh, I thought you said this was the problem. Both of them are. Oh, okay. In yeah. that case, we're uh, we're gonna move on then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you look at your uh, the business of uh, of singing, of mm -hmm. being a performer, uh, what hurdles do you see yourself facing, or are you facing? Um. Definitely, especially as like a brand new artist, I didn't realize how much I'd have to carry on my own. But a lot of the things that I learned at Cal State Fullerton really, really, like it gave me an introduction to those things, you know, and also like the emotional stress it would be. Um, and just kind of like learning to manage your emotions, learning to manage your finances, um, learning to sacrifice, all those things were like really, really hard. And I really, really had to like buckle down because if you know you want it that bad, you have to, you know, act accordingly, you know, and don't just say you want something. You have to, you have to do it, you know? So I think everything from financial, um, from learning to budget, um, learning to manage my emotions, learning to, to manage, um, being a manager and being the accountant and being the the one that books my shows, um, being the one that organizes my band and the one that reaches out to musicians and reaches out to venues and, um, yeah, being my own stylist, figuring out the way I want to look. There is a lot bigger artists have a whole team, you know, to support them. So if you're just starting out, you have to know that you have to be every single person on that team that a bigger artist would have in order to be as productive as possible. Yeah, so there's a, uh, a side of uh, performing, which is the business side. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the artists that you mentioned earlier, uh, few of them were overnight successes. Like yeah. in most cases, it took many years of uh, live performing, of, of self-promotion, et cetera. Uh, and I, I, I know that can, uh, that actually calls the herd because uh, I have a, a friend who's in the biz and she talks about how people can be just super talented, mm -hmm. but uh, as a performer, not have the chop, the, uh, the personal charisma, the confidence to yeah. do it. And, uh, and also the uh, persistence just to hang in there and uh, do the next gig, do the next gig, et cetera. Yeah, I think definitely that's like a big thing. I really learned that consistency. Sometimes you can feel like you're so tired, you know, and maybe certain things around you are like, you know, everybody's trying to talk to you all at one time and so many things are going on, but I've learned to like, let it, let it come at me, but don't like absorb it. 
you know, and that's something because even though everything is coming at me, I don't want my band members to feel that, you know, I don't want the audience to feel that. I don't want um, my producers to feel that, you know, I want everyone to to feel comfortable around me. You know, I want them to um, feel comfortable to be as creative as possible because um, a lot of those things do happen. A lot of things happening, you know, everything is like one after the other, one after the other. So that is another skill that you do have to, to learn. Yeah. So how does an artist such as yourself today make money? And uh, I'm a little older than you. Mm -hmm. And I recall they, they had these things called albums. Yeah. And that's what uh, in a different in along with uh, concert tickets, mm -hmm. you, know, you sold the albums. Now, the uh, things have changed rather dramatically. So Big change. what does your business model look like? Um, so artists these days um, make money off of records and endorsements, but the records are obviously digital records. Um, and then um, records, endorsements, shows, any shows I do. Um, I do private events as well. So if somebody's having like um, a birthday or they're having um, just um, a special event or like a mingling thing, um, I'll come out and perform. And um, yeah, so yeah, so my records. Merchandise? Um, yeah, merchandise is a big one. I don't have any merch yet, but merchandise is a is a really really big one for for upcoming artists to like have that to uh, for people to buy to also remember you as mm -hmm. well because every time they'll look at it they'll remember who you are. That's right. So um, uh, the uh, how are you different? Mm -hmm. So there's a uh, a lot of uh, folks out there uh, who've got talent who got style, um, what makes you unique as a yeah. performer? Um, well, first of all, um, I'm one of the very, very few people in Orange County that do the kind of music that I do. And I didn't really realize how much this kind of music was scarce in Orange County until I started doing it, you know? Then people were now like, yeah, that's the sound that we want. That's the sound that we've been missing. Um, so there is a a really big market in Orange County that's not being served um, in this particular genre. And um, and that's Neo Soul. Neo Soul, yeah. Okay. Neo Soul, R&B. There's like um, a gap here in Orange County that I'm, I'm really catering to. Okay. Um, are there people in your life that are coaching you uh, as a singer, as a writer as a performer or mm -hmm. you have advisors mentors i do i have um antoinetta salon d she's my vocal coach i talk to her about everything you know if i'm really really trying to figure out how to do something or what's the right decision to make um because she's been singing for a long time and um so that's my vocal coach um maureen she's from titan woman collective um, I talk to her as well about everything I do musically, but also more so on the business side, um, because there are other business projects that I, I am working on. Which Maureen, by the way? Uh, Maureen Shot. Shot. Okay. Right, right. And, um, um, she also, and she has a great background because she works with, um, Merrill Lynch. Mm -hmm. And so she thinks completely different from the way I think. And I, mm -hmm. I really, really value her opinion. Um, Rebecca Thomas, she's an attorney. Um, I met her at um, when I was interning at Legal Aid, when I was on the the path to law school, um, and she's always been in my corner, you know, um, being there for me, praying praying for me, um, and also Charlsetta Medina, you know, I go into her office at any time, even as a graduate, um, and talk to her about what's going on, and she always has sound advice to give me. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, kind of a personal question. Do mm -hmm. you feel, uh, do you fear failure? Um, so I, I hear you talking about having the confidence in yourself and that's what's uh, necessary uh, to take the next step. 
but do you have any trepidation? I wouldn't say I have a fear of failure. I think my biggest fear is like doing, not doing something, you know, I really, really, um, I'd be afraid that I would grow old and be like, oh, I wish I would have done that. Or I wish I would have done this, or I wish I would have done this better, you know? And I think that also drives my pursuit for excellence, you know, in terms of recording and photo shoots and um, now video shoots and everything um, from my whole appearance. You know, I, I really genuinely care, you know, about everything I do. And I never, ever want to be like, oh, I should have done this better or I should have done that better. If it's in my power to do it better, I'm going to do it that way the first time. So, yeah, I'm not afraid of failing, but I am afraid of not doing something well. All right. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's uh, 10 years from now. Tell me what life is like for you. <laughs> In 10 years from now, um, <laughs> in 10 years from now, I've already released five albums. At this point, I'm already mentoring other artists on how to be the best artist they can be, other young upcoming artists. Um, I, have, I have multiple businesses as well. And uh, I have a family. You know, I'm married, I have kids. And... Um, I'm providing the the best life I can for them, for myself. And I think it's extremely important to, to pour into people. And uh, most importantly, I'm staying connected to God and um, serving Jesus Christ any way I can and um, being there for my church. That's, that's very beautiful. So if I were to ask you, what's your superpower? <laughs> 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 what What would that be? I really feel like um, my energy is kind of contagious. You know, I I really, really, ha I have found a way to be happy and smile no matter the circumstance. And um, well, the truth is that everyone's energy is contagious. And if I have learned to be happy in every single situation, I can show others how to be that happy you know, in every single situation. Um, confidence is a big one. You know, everybody needs confidence. And those are a lot of the things that I like to share with people and to infect in others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I get it. I get it. Um, so do you see yourself uh, recording independently? Uh, is the hope... Uh, one of the big labels will uh, discover you? Uh, you know, I get asked this question like a lot. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I do get asked this question a lot. Whether I want to be signed to a label or not. I think more than anything, I want to own my own record label. Mm -hmm. You know? I really, really want to have my independence and freedom, which is what a lot of artists want. Um, I wouldn't say all artists want that, but there are a lot of artists that want that freedom. Um, and I also think I really, really want to help others. And I feel like owning my own record label will allow me the freedom to do that. Yeah. Well, I think technology makes that easier. It right? does. Uh, and the benefit would be the control yeah. that you get. Uh, that would challenge you to wear a lot of hats <laughs> it will it will yeah. but i believe it'll be worth it yeah very yeah. cool very cool so uh for your audience out there anything mm -hmm. you want to tell them while you've got the microphone here yeah listen to my new single made for this um check out my new music video made for this um made for this is available on all music streaming platforms and stores and I believe we can listen to it right now. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I 
I got a few things to get off my chest People trying to play away my innocence Trying to claim what God created Trying to block what God ordained Cause I'm so crown regardless How the power change hands How they break me and they hope I won't stand They gave me bricks so I built on Everything they gave, yeah, I took it on And I'm still here regardless This song, I made it, these words, I made it Believe that I'll make it, I'll make it track up actually <laughs> there's time to play your other song too okay you want to do yeah let's play it we can give it a shot the best part of being underestimated They'll never see you come until they see that you made it The day you work, you stamp it, you date it They won't understand, they can't appreciate it, no Oh, 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 oh. How you are the rose in a room full of daisies I was trying to tell you I was trying to tell you I would be up and they would be down They would be down I was trying to tell you I was trying to tell you That I would be up and they would be down for me For me So you know that you want it The night you pray, you take it, you name it Let them be the ones to tell of how you got it, baby Oh, 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 oh How you are the ass in a room full of babies I was trying to tell 
And that was underestimated by the artist known as... Amogene. Amogene. <laughs> and how, how does one spell that? O-M-O-G-H-E-N-E. -E. And there's accents on the E's facing to the right. But um, even if you Google it without the accents, it'll still come up. Very cool. Because yeah. we want people to find you, right? Exactly. You got any gigs coming up? Or? I do. I'm actually going to be performing here at Cal State Fullerton. Oh. On November 12th um, at the Becker Amphitheater outside. So I will be back on campus. Um, and that is going to be at 1 o'clock, I believe. Um, and then I'm performing on November 21st at State Social House. That is a free show. So I know sometimes some people can't afford to go to some shows. Um, so I am having a free show out there. And then I got one last show for the year on December 28th at the Federal in North Hollywood. Awesome. Well, it was a delight to have you today. Thank and, you for having uh, me. Let's uh, meet again in like a year and see what happens. Okay. Yes. All right. I'll best, be happy to come back. Best wishes. <laughs> Thank <All> you. Right. <laughs>